Hi everyone. My name is Alice. I'm the director of marketing at Diploma AI. Welcome to our step-by-step -step NLP workshop today. How's everyone doing? It's so great to see everyone from all over the world joining us today. I see people from Canada, from Nigeria, from India, from Germany, Argentina. That's fantastic. Why don't I just keep sending all the uh, the wonderful messages coming in? Start by saying hi to each other, just sharing a little bit about yourself, where you're from and what you do. I'm personally very excited about today's event, especially because I know this is, has been one of the top requests from you all for us to host a workshop. We heard you. If you are here today to learn how to build and deploy a virtual chatbot using NLP, you are at the right place. If not, well, why not just stay? I guarantee you will learn something new today. Before we start the workshop, a special shout out to our co-host, Fourth Brain. If you're looking to up-level your career, AI career, and not yet familiar with how Fourth Brain would be able to help you, I highly recommend you check out their live online instructor-led programs in machine learning. And if you are already thinking about enrolling in their programs, I have some good news for you. So for those who have signed up for the event today, Fourth Brain is offering an up to $9,000 in scholarship towards the tuition. So up to three people will be selected to receive $3,000 each of the tuition. If you'd like to learn more and apply, check out the link below in the description box. Heads up that the scholarship application deadline is coming up on November 30th next week. So Fourth Brain has an all-star team of machine learning instructors. Today, we're so honored to have one of them, Greg Luckney, joining us. Greg is the lead instructor of the ML Ops program at Fourth Brain, where he teaches students how to deploy, scale, and monitor ML models in development and production environments. Without further ado, drum roll, let's welcome Greg. Thanks so much, Alice. I'm really excited to be here today. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start sharing my screen now. And, uh, you know, I'm really, really pumped to see, uh, as I saw in the comments too, like what we can do in an hour. And, uh, and I'm really excited to share with you how to actually build and deploy something like a virtual chat bot, like an AI assistant. And, and to do this, uh, you know, really in about an hour, I think it can be done. And so, you know, today uh, we're going to walk through step by step how to actually scope the problem, how to actually get the data in the model, how to build the web app, and how to really deploy things into the cloud. Uh, but, but first, what I wanna do is I wanna talk a little bit about you know, why I'm here giving you this presentation and the background and the lens through which I'm coming uh, into this problem and taking a look at it from. And then I wanna talk a little bit about chatbots in general and sort of the ubiquitous nature of these things up and coming in the world. Uh, then we're gonna talk uh, just a little bit about some of the things that we should be thinking about as we go to create NL MVPs, NLP MVPs in you know, either sort of zero to one startup environments, or even uh, if you're working for a larger company and you're thinking about deploying a tool like this. Um, so you know, before we get started, I'm just kind of curious, you know, one of the things that uh, we want to do today is we want to make this interactive. And, you know, one of the things I wanted to kick it off with is just kind of this idea of, of figuring out how many people have actually used a chatbot. Uh, you know, we're, we're going to use this AHA slides thing today, and we're going to make sure that um, we, we kind of are, are interacting with each other and learning from each other in real time. So if you could, uh, if you want to interact, if you want to be part of this, uh, go to ahaslides.com slash DLA bot, DLAI bot. And, uh, and then, you know, actually just start, you know, smashing those yes, no, or really can't be sure buttons. Now we're going to have a number of questions coming up and, and really this is going to be an opportunity for you to ask things that you want to know and an opportunity to kind of learn, to see what, uh, what other people, uh, think and what other people have done and what their experience is. So I'm seeing some, uh, you know, some great responses coming in. We've got, uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and, you know, start sharing here. Um, 
it looks like, you know, it looks like basically, you know, the vast majority of people uh, have used a uh, chatbot. I think, you know, it's hard to think about um, exactly all the places that we see these virtual assistants today. And a lot of times, you know, my, my inclination is that can't be sure is going to rise in, in the years to come here. It's really going to rise. So, you know, I think basically what we're seeing is that everybody uses chatbots even today. And I think that's why, you know, as Alice said, this is, this is one of the most highly, uh, you know, sought after uh, things today. We had computer vision, now we have NLP. Okay. So yeah, thank you all for that very much. Uh, we'll go back to this sort of uh, DL DLAI bot thing for the rest of the presentation. All right, thanks. Uh, a little bit about me. Um, you know, I, I basically like grew up on the East Coast, lived in the Midwest for about 15 years, moved to San Francisco recently. Uh, I came up as a mechanical engineer with the, then a material science uh, background that got me really into computation and really into modeling, simulation, and data-driven design of, of, you know, first research uh, and then development. And ultimately, you know, that led me into uh, wanting to get more involved with digital product. And in sort of after grad school, when I had this degree in, in sort of optimization, everybody came to me in about 2015, 16, and they said, hey, Greg, you know, where's the machine learning? Uh, where's the deep learning? Where is all of this stuff that I'm hearing about? You keep talking about optimization, but I'm not hearing machine learning from you. And, you know, it was kind of this really interesting uh, space to be in because I had actually studied gradient descent, like very, very highly in depth solving convex optimization problems, you know, throughout grad school. But what then happened is, is you know, as you all know, I mean, that was useful knowledge uh, early on in 2016, 17, 18, um, even in the past couple of years, uh, that's less important to know this kind of thing anymore. And, um, you know, and so what, what we're seeing is we're seeing this growth, this explosion of ease of use of these ML and AI tools. And, and that's what really I think is most exciting about the space today. And that really is, is the lens that I'm coming from today is that sort of entrepreneurship uh, product focused lens. So we're, we, I, we actually are interested today in deploying something that's really end to end. And the, the purpose of this is to really, if we could frame the context here, uh, you know, this was kind of a prescient thing to have said in 2019, uh, Harvard Business Review article talking about like in the next decade, AI assistance will actually become the primary channel, like the channel through which we get not only all information, but essentially all of our goods and services. You know, you may have heard of the, uh, you know, we ship to shop uh, we, or we shop to ship. The, that's the Amazon business model today. But, you know, when the business model actually makes more sense to ship than shop, that's going to happen. And so, like, you know, the what's what's really a side effect of this is that marketing itself becomes this this battleground for our attention. And that's sort of where, um, you know, this this exciting space of like of bots and, you know, people basically talking to us through program chatbots. I mean, this is this is going to be this is just going to be uh, crazy. It's going to be absolutely nuts. And then when the dust settles, um, really, we'll have a handful of general purpose AI platforms left. And then most of us will only probably use one. Uh, and our assistant will be incorporated into our house, into our car, into our smartphone. It's going to be nuts. And, you know, this is what we heard two weeks ago from, from Lewis from Hugging Face, right? I really loved this quote from Lewis. Like, we use text in business for everything. And this is so true. It's like, this is the thing about chatbots and virtual assistants is that if we can kind of automate something that right now a human does talking or texting or, or messaging someone, then we are going to. And, you know, there was another great question asked in this event as well. And it was sort of like framed, how can we build services like, like Grammarly, right? How can we build services that are like these, these kind of NLP uh, powered services? And this is kind of the, the focus of today a little bit is to say, hey, well, you know, you kind of have to know about NLP, but more and more you can be abstracted from NLP. And it's actually more kind of important to be able to say, well, what's the front end 
and what's the back end? And then how does NLP fit in the middle? And like, how can we actually then take this simple app, simple web app, simple smartphone app, and go start testing it uh, with some customers? This would work in a big company, in a small company. This would be something that you could do uh, really anywhere. And you can do it very, very cheaply. And that's sort of the point of today. Today is meant to give some insight into those digital product fundamental pieces of how to take NLP and how to use it. Now, of course, there's this other side. And there's this other side that's this burgeoning industry of you know, the big players in this game. We have AWS. We have GCP. We have Azure. And really, what we're seeing is they, they gave us machine learning platforms. They gave us auto ML platforms. And now they're all giving us specifically chatbot and virtual assistant focused platforms. So Amazon Lex and Dialogflow, uh, these things, you know, the, the Azure bot service is sort of the kind of equivalent there. And even, even recently, Microsoft has released what they're calling Azure Power Virtual Agents. And these virtual agents, these are saying, what they're saying is, you know, this moves beyond HR, beyond sales, and quote, to any channel or domain imaginable today. This is wild stuff. This is today you could do this, okay? And so even players like HubSpot, like SAP, these people are getting in the chatbot game through acquisition. And so there's a lot of smaller companies out there. A shout out to chatbot.com. Like that was a sweet pickup um, at the right time. I mean, these companies are going to are getting acquired like mad and there's really like a lot of opportunity space for a lot more players to start coming into this mix and into this fold but there's this other side and there's this sort of mvp side how do we get this minimum viable prototype how do we get this minimum viable product how do we actually just do this without dumping a bunch of money into an ecosystem like aws or gcp or azure and that's what we're going to focus on today. All right. So let's do it. Let's do it. Um, but, but first, uh, I want to know uh, how many of you have ever actually, you know, built one of these things before? So go to uh, DLAI bot and sort of like, let's look at, we saw how many have used one. Let's see how many have, have kind of built one. Um, and for all of you that have built one, if you could just smash the, uh, the comments with like a little bit more information about what you built. I think that would really help out kind of all the deep learners out there. And this could be a really a, a really interesting discussion. So let's check this out. I'm actually, you know, this is pretty surprising actually to see how many people have, have really built their own chatbot. And I think this number, again, uh, this lower number is going to go up. Uh, we're seeing, you know, this is great. You know, I really, I really love this, this engagement here. This is awesome. Um, yeah, so so we're seeing that kind of a lot of people have built chatbots actually. You know, what is it? One one fifth, uh, one fourth of people have actually built their own chatbot. I think this number, even though it's pretty high already, twenty percent or so, is going to go up. Yeah. So thank you for that. Okay, so so let's do it. Let's build it. Um, let's build it. All right. Um, but wait, hold on, hold on. Are we? Uh, I feel like we're forgetting something. Um, I don't know about you, but I've I've kind of jumped into building. Uh, in my life uh, a lot, maybe too fast sometimes. And, and you know, so it's important to not necessarily start with what, right? But to start with why and to start with the problem that we're solving, right? To start with the framing of the context of why we're, we're doing this chatbot thing. So I want to do this by telling a story, okay? And once upon a time, uh, there was a product manager named Paige, all right? And Paige worked for Doracle. Doracle was a company trying to revolutionize the fortune-telling industry, okay? And they've actually developed a solid fortune-telling platform and business so far. It's a services business at this point. And they've got a web app, and they've got software infrastructure, and Customers and fortune tellers are actively connecting with one another today. But really, you know, they've only gotten some seed funding. They're still a small team. Paige is the first product hire after the CEO. And until they can show investors that the service model is really scalable, 
uh, they're not going to be able to raise Series A funding. So in short, what they're trying to do is they're trying to move from this services business to this software as a service business. A so-called product-led company is what they hope to become so that that will allow them to show investors, hey, we understand the game and we know what we need to do to become masters of scale. All right, so what the, what they need to do first and foremost is they need to convince investors that they're going to be the company that revolutionizes this industry. There's a lot of players in this game. There's, you know, the, one of the big things they can do is they can show that they know how to produce real value with uh, the hottest thing out there. And that is ML and AI first products. The first order of business then is to basically help create value with those immediately. And that means looking at the repetitive tasks that the sales team does today. And that is the information gathering on both sides of the platform. Hey, fortune seekers, what exactly are you looking for? Hey, fortune tellers, what exactly are you looking for? Let's make a connection. This piece, this information gathering piece has just been outfitted as the first team. This is the team that Paige is leading, the info gathering team. And this really aligns with more of a rule-based classical AI algorithm approach that you know is gonna allow the sales reps to basically do better at what are the highest leverage activities that they can do. So rather than be focused on info gathering acquisition phase stuff, they're gonna go further downstream and become a true customer success team. And that's kind of the, the, the real value creation piece. However, they've also got a big moonshot project. And that moonshot project page is also overseeing. And the plan while for information gathering is to like run it in shadow mode, go through AI assistance, partial automation, and then fully automated version to like release salespeople. The AI psychic is our top secret, build out the future of fortune telling. And if we can position our product to leverage the latest and greatest models, we hear that the super intelligent AI might be coming soon. And if so, we will be able to leverage transfer learning to build it directly in to what we hope is going to be something that actually accurately predicts people's futures. All right. So today we need an MVP though. And the problem that we're trying to solve is that based on our proprietary market analysis, there are not enough fortune tellers to fill global consumer demand of people who want their fortune told. Okay. So this is the problem. Now, if this is the problem we're trying to solve, we have to look somewhere for the data and the models to get started. And so if this is the problem we're trying to solve, where would you look for data and models? I'm, I'm kind of interested here. We're going we're gonna to sort of open this up. Um, you know, you might say anything. Like uh, you, you can enter up to three different things. Um, where would you go look today to try to solve a problem like this? Um, I'm very interested to hear from all of you where you would go look for data and models. Um, there are, you know, places that I would go, um, and there are places that we did go, um, to solve this problem. And I love this, right? Hugging face, killing it. Um, stack overflow, uh, YouTube, GitHub. So there's, yeah, there's a lot of places. And I think Kaggle is, uh, is crushing it here. Kaggle is crushing it. Uh, I think that's, that's primarily what we're hearing from, from a lot of folks is, is, is hugging face, Google, GitHub. Uh, yep. Okay. Very cool. Kaggle is king still today, 2021. Kaggle is king. So cool. Uh, the stuff we get to learn together today. Um, yeah, very, very cool. Awesome. Yeah. Keep those, uh, keep those, keep that feedback coming. We'll, we'll share this feedback. Uh, yeah, Kaggle is king, basically. Kaggle is king. Okay, so what did uh, what did our team do? Well, uh, I'm going to let you know what the team did, but I want to let you know, too, all the resources that I showed today for how to build this chatbot are available in the YouTube Live description right now. So if you want to get to work on building this chatbot before you even see the rest of this story, although I encourage you to stick around and check out the story, uh, then go ahead and, and smash those links in the YouTube description below. So what happens next? Well, Paige goes to the first data science hire 
and his name's Jay. Jay is a recent data science uh, grad. He This is his first data science job. He's really not a sort of a software engineer. He doesn't love the data engineering side. He doesn't love the sort of ops side. He really loves playing with the, the data that's already structured and the models. So he actually starts browsing around on Kaggle first, but ultimately he did hear about this new, really cool up and coming company. And thinking about it, he, uh, he decides he wants to check that out. He wants to check out this Hugging Face company. And so with that in mind, he kind of says, okay, like, you know, ideally if this goes well, um, and we can kind of get this on the roadmap, like there's a lot of cool work to do. And maybe we could even hire another MLE or an ML ops person so I could keep doing my, my data science as the team grows. Um, so as he's thinking, Paige points him to uh, kind of some information about the customers. And our customers really are the psychics. And the psychics are the people who kind of create the culture of the platform in, in large measure. And so it's interesting that uh, the you know Paige told Jay that the the community of psychics that we've had the most success with on our platform is directly from the psychic subreddit, uh, which is the largest psychic community forum on Reddit. And we we did actually pull a number of, of people from other uh, traction channels within Reddit that are leveraging our platform today. But this is really kind of the flavor of the psychic that we want to create. So Jay takes this information and he goes and he looks on Hugging Face and he he actually stumbles across a really awesome Reddit-focused, pre-trained chatbot model. And it's called Dialo GPT Medium. And this is trained on 147 million different Reddit discussions. Um, and essentially the human evaluation results on the Turing test here are killer. I mean, this, this is a great model. And look how easy it is. This copy paste of this code looks like it's going to be a piece of cake in Jupyter Notebook. Um, now, Jay knows that like the whole like to create the 27 gig structured data set, he's going to have to, you know, leverage almost, you know, three quarters of a terabyte of space and he's going to download it over a couple of days and like pre-training and retraining and all of this other stuff to sort of customize the embeddings. This is a lot of work. And he knows that what we want here is we want to go zero to one. So he first he, he starts to test this thing out because you can test it out right on Hugging Face. It was super great. Um, and it seems like, hey, okay, um, yeah, sure. Um, seems good enough, right? Seems good enough. And so he decides to move forward with this, with this data and with this model. And so he decides to um, show us exactly how he does this uh, so he can start the conversation with other members of the team. And you can see this, this video, this video is on live on YouTube for you, but we're gonna see exactly what Jay does to try to solve this problem. So he uses Windows subsystem for Linux and he uses the Ubuntu distribution. Um, but first he goes to the Hugging Face website and the Hugging Face website uh, is really easy to navigate. He's just like, okay, I need the medium one. I go to models, I go to Dialog GPT medium. And let me look here. Okay, yeah, I guess all I need is that code. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up my Windows terminal and my Ubuntu terminal. And the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to update everything because I'm kind of doing this from scratch. And put in my password, I'm gonna go ahead and install Python and I'm gonna install pip. I'm gonna make sure that everything's good to go and I can install whatever I need to later. I'm going to set up my virtual environment. I'm going to create a new directory uh, that I can do that in. And I'm just gonna call it chatbot event, right? Well, we're gonna call it chatbot event. And I'm gonna go ahead and click into that. And you know, so, so Jay's on his way. The, the next step is to actually create this virtual environment. And this virtual machine, we're going to call it Chatty VM, right? The Chatty Virtual Machine. And once we create this, we want to now activate this virtual machine. And this virtual machine 
now that we're in, we're in the virtual machine. Okay, so we went from uh, Windows to Windows subsystem for Linux to Ubuntu. Now we're in the virtual machine. We want to install Jupyter because we don't even have Jupyter yet. Now that we've installed Jupyter, we can launch it from our virtual machine. We can click the link and we can set up a new Jupyter notebook. All right, this Python 3 Jupyter notebook is going to be everything that we need for this simple code from Hugging Face. Again, thank you, Hugging Face, making our lives easy uh, as data scientists. But we notice, OK, wait, transformers and torch. We didn't install transformers or torch yet. So we want to you know, go ahead and open up another terminal. We want to go ahead and install torch. That's PyTorch um, that you know this particular model leverages. Uh, we're going to speed this up a little bit. And then we want to install transformers. Once we kind of get everything set, we've got our virtual machine set up. We go back to our Jupyter notebook and you know the, the classic restart and run all. And we are approximately now on our way. Okay, so we're, get, we're getting our sort of fortune tell, told here, if we ask the right question, uh, what are we gonna ask? Um, I don't know, Jay's kind of getting warmed up here. Will the sun come out tomorrow? Uh, we hope so, we hope so. Okay, so we've got our data and model set up and now we've got our Jupyter notebook set up. Now, we all we need to do is we need to take it and go beyond, right? Now we need to create this web app. We need to create this ability uh, to look at something beyond the ML model. And so if we, if we had to do this, if you had to do this today, I'm interested, what would you choose to use? Would you choose for this web app to use Fast API? Would you choose Flask? Would you choose Django? Would you choose something else? Or do you just absolutely have no clue what you would choose? And you know, if you can't read stuff in here, I apologize for the, uh, you know, the, the size of the text, um, but we do have the videos live. And I hope that those will be sufficient to kind of zoom in on and, and to help you out uh, to build these on your own. And, uh, and I encourage uh, feedback like that continue to, to keep coming. So this is pretty interesting. Um, you know, we're seeing a lot of our deep learners out there. Uh, you know, Flask and I have no idea. Uh, very, very uh, competitive here. I'm not sure which one's going to win. This is... Uh, this is uh, pretty interesting, right? I mean, I think I think Flask is the one that many of us hear about often, and it's also the one um, that we we tend to go to as data scientists first, at least today, uh, in my experience with the data scientists that I've worked with. Um, I have no idea. Crushing. I have no idea. Crushing. Um, very very cool. So uh, yeah. So this is this is I think speaks to the importance of doing this. So I'm glad that we sort of align this with what everyone kind of expects. Um, Jay takes his, his Jupyter Notebook to, the, uh, to Brent. And Brent is the software engineer. Brent is the software engineer that does it all. He does back end, he does front end, he does everything in between. He is a true DevOps savant and he also does front end. He doesn't really like believe in ML and AI, he really feels like it's kind of like all hype, right? He He's really only interested in picking up tools, like if they're going to solve the problem and if they're going to solve the problem on the job that he's working on today. He's not a fan of buzzwords, he's not a huge fan of this ML ops thing. And he really aims at becoming the indispensable member of any team that he joins. He's a long-term guy. He's the Brent, right? And he likes to make things happen. So when Jay comes to him and says, he thinks Flask, like Flask, like you know, Brent's like, okay, that's fine. I haven't used Flask before, but I'll figure it out real quick. So Brent realizes though, that like he has to figure out a little bit of back end, a little bit of front end. And he's like, he hasn't even told me that he's done anything with the front end yet. Let me see if I can go pick something off of GitHub that looks like I could use it pretty quickly. And so Brent finds uh, this um, Gotham chatbot that has, you know, one uh, star on it. Uh, so, you know, smash Gotham chatbot um, that was created at the right time on Halloween in 2021 for him to leverage. And so, you know, uh, kudos to you, Gotham chatbot creator. 
um, you know, really appreciate uh, letting, lev letting Doracle leverage um, this code. And so that's the beauty of open source. Uh, and Brent sits down at Jay's computer and he says, hey, move over. Let me show you uh, how to do this. So he says, okay, first what we need to do is we need to get Git installed. And then once we have Git installed, we can actually clone our Git repository, the Gotham chatbot repository. And like, just check this out, super easy. Now that it's in there, like, look, it's in there with your untitled notebook, Jay, great job with your untitled notebook, uh, you know, and we're just gonna go into this and we're just gonna run it. And, you know, Jay's mind is blown because uh, Brent already has this thing up and running. And, but he's asking him, he's like, you know, hey, I'm Brent, uh, but this bot, I am, what am I jealous of? Uh, you're not too bright, are you? But, you know, what is AI? Uh, this bot, this bot is the chatter bot, bot and it's really not gonna work for our fortune telling. Um, and, you know, this, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna like copy paste this file folder called Gotham Chatbot. We're gonna call it Dialo GPT Chatbot. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna look at both the requirements file real quick and we're gonna work, look at the, um, the application file. So Brent comes in and he's like, hey, uh, you know, we're not gonna need this chatterbot thing. Um, you know, as I look through, I don't really care about any of this other stuff, but I know that we'll probably need to, I think I saw in the Transformers documentation, we'll need to, we'll need to upgrade uh, this, uh, this YAML um, version. And then I'm gonna add Torch and Transformers. Okay, good to go, requirements good to go. Now, uh, here's my API. Uh, where was that Jupyter Notebook that you that you had before? Oh yeah, hold on, let me grab this. And I'm gonna just straight paste this into my little Flask app. Uh, this is in, uh, you know, I'll just use Notepad++, that's fine. I've got, you know, VM code on my machine I would use instead, but whatever, do what you want, Jay. Um, and, you know, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, uh, just replace the library installs, I'm gonna replace the tokenizer in the model. And, and this is just where we get the, the bot response. So here's where we just go ahead and um, get our bot response. Looks like user text is where we should put this input to leverage this UI. It looks like we don't need to spit it out kind of generically, rather we can spit it out through the UI in this form of a string. And then, yeah, I guess we don't need that. And we just need to, you know, uh, tab over and we should be good to go. Let's check out this index because I think it said Gotham chatbot. Um, we're going to find that in templates and we can open that just in notepad as well. Uh, let's make it, you know, something that looks more reasonable for what we're trying to do. I can predict your future. Uh, ask me anything. Um, you know, I tell fortunes, great, okay. Uh, so now we're set up, Brent says, okay, that's it. We're just gonna shut that down and we're just gonna go ahead and get into the next folder that we just created, Dialo GPT. And all we have to do is we just have to run it just like we did with the Gotham chatbot. Again, th don't do this for production, Jay, but it's fine to test with page and with customers. So let's see. Uh, hi, Dialo GPT. I'm Brent. Hi, Brent. Uh, you're brighter than Batsy. Uh, I'm not. Uh, well played. Well played, Dialo GPT. Uh, what do you think of Jay? I think he's a good guy. Um, will I become rich one day? Uh, you will become rich one day. Uh, Brent's like, yes. Okay. So great. Um, and with that, I want to kind of see um, we can take a couple minutes here before we go into the next phase of this thing um, to see if anybody has any questions that uh, that might need answered. So we're going to kind of take like a, a bit of a, a bit of a break here. If you saw anything that kind of uh, confused you or that you wanted to dive a little bit deeper into, uh, we'll give it just a, a minute here or so to see if we have any questions that we can answer. And sorry for all of you that cannot see the code. Um, we will. Okay, so go ahead and, and you can start upvoting these things. Let's see. 
All right, we'll wait a couple more. Um, okay, let's see what we've got here. Um, so how do I find... So, okay, how do I find data sets specific to the business that I want to implement the chatbot for? So this is really uh, where the rubber hits the road for value creation. I mean, this is where we really have to work hand in hand with the business leaders and with the people who know our customers the best. Generally in a startup environment, that's gonna be your, your product manager. It might be your user researcher. Uh, it might be part of the design team, but you wanna understand you know, who the users that you're building for are. This is the most important thing. And so to find data sets specific, this is what takes the creativity, honestly. This is what takes the human creativity. Um, and this is the real piece that, that you know, you, we're never gonna be able to automate, quite frankly. I mean, this is the piece. And so um, this is a tough problem. And it, when you can solve this problem, that's when you're really creating massive value uh, for your company, right? For your for your the team, uh, and then hopefully for your family, for your community, uh, and for the world more generally. Um, so yeah, so very great question. Um, it's it's a tough problem. Uh, I think you know how to do this in foreign languages. I think we heard a little bit about this two weeks ago in the AMA. Uh, this is very tough to do in foreign lang foreign languages now. Um, there's a lot of uh, there's there's a lot of work going on. Um, in that space. But right now, I mean, English is by and large the absolute um, the, the, the absolute leader in this space. And so I'm not sure if it would be best to sort of train it in English and then try to convert it to something else later. Uh, but you can imagine stacking these uh, translation tools on top of these prediction tools um, in various ways as they both continue to mature. So that's also a great question. Um, you know, can we fine tune the model for a specific domain? I mean, this is exactly where we want to make sure the answer is yes. And we want to make sure that this is going to be a useful thing to do when we send Jay to spend, you know, a month working on this, developing custom data from our customers, flavoring the model with Doracle specific information. So, we want to make sure that we've got an ability to say, we're going to spend this much money on it. It's probably going to be worth it in the end. And so, yes, we can, and yes, we should, but we want to make sure that the business case is there first uh, before we start um, putting a ton of J's time into it. Okay. Very, very cool. Thank you all for your uh, great questions. Uh, we're going to have another opportunity for questions at the end of the session here. Uh, but for now, we're going to continue the story. Um, and, uh, and you know, I see, do you have a step-by-step -step written up? I, you know, for that being such a high question, we're, we, I am going to write that up um, and make that a little bit more clear in the uh, GitHub repo um, rather than just the videos. So uh, Jay and Brent continue the story. Jay says, hey, hey, nice. Uh, did you say we're going to use Docker to deploy the web app? Like, can you show me that, Brent? That'd be so cool. Like, and he says, yeah, we'll use container images. Like, download Docker desktop. Like, we'll keep it easy, we'll keep it GUI based, and I'll show you how to do it on your computer. Um, so they, they continue the conversation, and Brent says, hey, remember how you had to set up a chatty VM from the ground up with uh, Python, with pip, with Git, with your NLP libraries and all of that? Jay's like, hey, for sure. And we did that all on Ubuntu on uh, Windows subsystem for Linux, right, the second edition. And Brent's like, exactly. Uh, so we'll effectively use chatty VM you know, through Ubuntu as our operating system to deploy containers locally. That's what we're going to do first. And Jay's like, sounds simple enough. Uh, so are you saying we'll actually put our containers inside of our virtual machine, inside of Chatty VM? And uh, Brent's like, right, just like any other computer. Here, I'll show you. Um, so Brent goes and, uh, and he's like, hey, just move over. Thanks for downloading Docker Desktop. Um, let me show you how to do this. I'm going to go ahead and create a new folder. I'm going to call it Dialog GPT Chatbot Dockerize. I'm just going to create a new folder here called Source, and I'm going to put everything except the requirements in there. I'm going to show you how to create this Docker file now too, and the Docker file is the key file for Docker, right? No kidding. And 
what we have to do is we have to create this Docker file. First, we're going to take Python from Docker Hub. We're going to set our working directory. Um, this is within our container, within our container. We're going to copy the requirements document to that working directory in our container. We're going to install the requirements from the document by running our classic command to install requirements docs. Then we're going to copy the entire Flask app, back end, front end stuff. It's all there in source. Um, and we're going to call the application. And then we've got this port that we're going to expose, uh, 8080. Uh, you've probably seen this before. This is sort of uh, best practices for, for simple uh, Flask apps. And so we, we want host to be 000 so we can have you know, external IPs accessing this thing. Um, and the, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to basically go into now this new folder. And we have to call now one new command, and it's docker build. And you see we're kind of speeding this up here. Once we build it, there it is. We can see it. Um, and we can see that it's almost you know four gigs large. And we can just straight up use the Docker desktop app, um, you know, port 8080 to run this thing. And we can kind of look and see how it would look in the terminal as it's as it's moving, as it's operating. Um, and uh, then we can boom, uh, hit the open it up. And you know, at this point, uh, Jay and Brent are kind of starting to believe. Um, so we're starting to get a little more complicated. Uh, what will my fortune be? Like, uh, perfect. Thanks. Thanks, fortune bot. Um, ah, oh, fortune bot. Okay. Always savagely messing with me, the Reddit trained fortune telling bot. So uh, at this point, um, let's pick up the conversation where we left off with Brent and Jay, where Brent said, yeah, yeah, well, just like any other computer, but then we're going to ditch chatty. Right? We're going to ditch it, and we're going to create a new VM in the cloud. We're going to download and install everything that we need right there in the cloud. And then Jay's like, yeah, then we'll have a public link right, to test with our customers, and we can give it to Paige. And you know, so Jay's starting to get it. Jay's starting to get it. All right, so you're, you're Jay. Um, what are you going to do? Uh, what are you going to use to solve this problem? You need a cloud platform. And we all have our preferred cloud platforms. And I think it's going to be really interesting to see where your minds go as deep learners out there uh, in terms of cloud platforms that you feel like um, we should be leveraging today in 2021 for models and for products like this. All right, let's check out the race here. Okay, we've got a head-to-head -head race, uh, full-on sprint between Google Cloud Platform and AWS. AWS has had an early lead here, and uh, GCP seems to be, um, you know, competing, bringing it. Uh, Azure uh, trailing something else, very much trailing. Um, AWS, it's hard to compete. It's hard to compete with AWS. Um, you know, very, very cool. Again, if, if you're looking to uh, contribute to this discussion, go to ahaslides.com slash D-L-A-I bot. And, and we'd love to get your, your feedback on uh, which cloud platform you would use. So it's kind of a toss up. It's kind of a toss up. And, you know, in this case, um, there's really no decision to be made for Doracle. Well, why is that? Um, well, because, you know, as, as Brent says, hey, we basically use GCP for everything. So, like, we're using GCP, Jay. Um, most of our infrastructure is on GCP. And so, like, there it is. I already have an account. It's, it's already set up for billing. I'll just show you how to do this real quick. And so, basically, that cloud infrastructure is what we're going to leverage for this. So, Jay says, okay, let me get this straight. We're going to create a virtual machine in the cloud which has its own operating system. Brent's like, yes, correct. Then Jay's like, and in that host OS, we're going to leverage Docker to create a containerized application by building a remote image container in the cloud. 
And Brent says, you know, you're really starting to sound like a developer, Jay. Like, I like it. Keep going, my man. Keep going. So Brent says, okay, stick with me. I feel like you're a fast learner, so I'm going to go a little bit faster this time. Um, GCP, let me show you how it's done. So GCP, we're just going to go to our console. Again, you have to have this set up for billing. I was messing around with some stuff earlier. We're going to open the shell editor, and we're going to make this full screen. You can see we're starting our virtual machine. We're starting our cloud instance, and we're starting our editor. And we first want to just upload exactly that Dockerize folder that we used locally. And once we upload all of the items in that folder, again, this folder is available for everybody out there on GitHub. We want to click into that folder. And then simply, we just have a couple commands to run. The first one is build the container image in the cloud, gcloud builds submit. Simple as that. We want to authorize this API call to GCP. And this is kind of sped up here. And it says, hey, don't run on root. It's like, hey, we're not running on root. It's just root of the VM in the cloud. So like, don't worry about the red text, Brent says to Jay. Um, but it takes a, a little while here to create the image. And now we've got one more. Remember, we've got four gigs of container that we need to actually deploy to the cloud. And it's a 256 uh, megabyte um, you know, default here. So when we run the deploy command, we want to make sure that we further specify, you know, we're getting a, a pretty long-winded folder structure title here. So Dialo GPT chatbot Docker eyes GCP, but let's go ahead and specify that we need those four gigs. We need all of them. And now nah, we don't really need a service name, so just hit enter. Uh, yeah, we're on the West Coast, so let's go ahead and do it. Twenty five. That sounds great. Allow unauthenticated invocations. Yeah, sure. Um, this is a you know this is a zero to one. And look, we're spinning, we're spinning, we're spinning, and we're gonna speed up the spinning up and oh man like we're almost there we're almost there jay's getting pumped jay's getting amped uh jay is he's like oh my gosh are we there are we there um and uh brent's like yeah let me let me let me show you man here and if you don't believe me let's go ahead and just open up a uh an incognito tab just like make sure this isn't like some local thing um, now go ahead and send it to Paige, send it to your friends. Uh, let's play with this now. We're getting, uh, let's ask it some classic fortune teller questions here. So what will my finances look like in the future, right? Um, you'll be able to afford a house and a car. Savage Reddit, nice. Uh, will I get the promotion at work? I'm sure you will. Okay, excellent. This fortune teller is going to be killer. Uh, what are some things you can tell me about my partner? That's a tough one. Um, Hmm. I'm not sure what you're asking. Oh, okay. Well played. Well played. Um, let's see. Hmm. What can we ask it? Let's maybe some classic, like when will I, when will I, what? I don't know. Some classic ones. What are they? Have a child? Um, when you have a child. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Okay. When will I, um, when will I get married? Uh, when you're ready. Oh, excellent. And then, uh, you know, Brent says, hey, look, so here's what you can see. Let's call this monitoring, Jay. This is level one monitoring. You see this green hump? Yeah, this is what we just did. So boom, now you know how to monitor too. Of course, you could create custom stuff as you go from one to N. You could do all sorts of uh, different things as you go from one to N. But um, no, that's not really what we're doing uh, today. So. Product, data science, and software success. This is uh, Jay and Brent are like, hey, Paige, check it out. Built and shipped. Uh, she says, hey, this is so awesome, guys. Uh, give me a few days to start some customer development activities and uh, feedback coming soon, right? Feedback coming soon. So as, as Jay and Brent leave work, uh, Jay thinks, no, I hope the users don't ask questions that are too hard, right? And, uh, and Brent's like, 
Yeah, I hope that like only a few users ping this thing at a time. Um, this thing is pretty fragile. It's like a little fragile um, infant product. Um, and I'm not sure how well it's going to stand up to abuse. So the next day, Jay comes in and, and Paige is like, hey, that's it for the AI psychic for now. Follow up with the dev lead on the info gathering team for next steps. Like, I'll bring you back in once the AI psychic has some more movement. Like, over there, they're not building something brand new, though. Uh, so no ground up prototypes needed, Jay. Uh, they're working on something that exists already. So go see how you can help them. Look at the data that exists, investigate technical debt, and try to figure out how to make iterative improvements to top level KPIs that flow up to business objectives. Uh, and you know, Jay's like, yeah, yeah, sure, Paige. Um, he thinks like, maybe I should have taken more time on stuff I actually like. Um, totally could have spent more time researching the fortune telling domain and like training custom embeddings and, and all of that. Um, well, hopefully she'll be back. And, uh, you know, I'm happy to report that one month later, uh, Doracle raises their Series A. Uh, they impress the investors with their new ML first and AI first products and their adventures from data to deployment and beyond and beyond, uh, the adventures continue. Okay. So if you want to compete with Doracle or you want to build your own chatbot, again, we've got the links uh, in the description below. We've got YouTube videos for now, but I'm hearing a lot of uh, uh, feedback on uh, the, the comments about how can we can sort of make this more step-by-step. -step. I'm going to go ahead and make those updates over the next day or so to the GitHub. So look out for that. Uh, but I want to go ahead and just thank everyone. Uh, feel free to reach out anytime. Greg at Fourth Brain, hit me up on LinkedIn or on Twitter. And um, you know, last but not least, um, shameless plug for the MLOps cohort that starts uh, uh, next, uh, you know, early next year. If you like learning this stuff, basically we went from zero to one today, and we have a cohort program that's active right now with uh, you know many of these beautiful people that you see right here. Um, all these ML practitioners here that I get the privilege to facilitate their learning. We are actually going to not just deploy and test zero to one in here, but we are going to figure out how to scale and manage uh, horizontally um, on the, on the uh, you know, usage side as well. We'll figure out how to set up custom monitoring dashboards and how to think about bigger uh, infrastructure uh, plumbing tools that we might consider using in the future. So we've actually got a special scholarship that we want to um, you know, let you know about. Alice mentioned it in the beginning, uh, you know, half off basically for, for three people that are here today. So check out uh, fourthbrain.ai slash DL scholarship. And, um, and so with that, I'd like to kind of give a final round of uh, any questions. So we'll open the questions back up and uh, we'll bring this back for just a few minutes here before we close out the session. So can we fine tune the models? We've answered that. Step-by-step uh, -step instructions written up. Um, I will definitely do that. I will make sure that that is there for everyone over the next uh, 24 hours. Um, why was the model not trained on Reddit data? So we actually uh, took a pre-trained model that was trained on Reddit data. So this data is actually sort of um, implicitly in the model already. And so um, this pre-trained model embeddings that we used was, those were learned from Reddit data directly. We just didn't have to do the training ourselves because that would have been a massive, massive um, undertaking and, uh, and certainly beyond the scope of, of one hour. So feel free to, you know, um, pop some more questions in here if you have other questions. Um, uh, Hugging Face. Hugging Face has it all. So I would encourage you to check out Hugging Face for all of their models. They've got tons of BERT models, uh, tons of pre-trained models. They've even got moved into computer vision and all sorts of other things. They're a fantastic resource. Um, and, you know, plus one for Hugging Face. Um, great stuff they're doing. And this is the kind of thing that enables all of us to sort of leverage uh, to create value out there in our 
in our jobs uh, for the companies that, that we're working for and that we're trying to build. So um, yeah, they've got a lot, um, GPT and BERT and in between. All right, let's see. How can we actually create our own chatbot? bot? Um, uh, so yeah, I'm not sure uh, exactly what, what's meant by that. Um, but uh, yeah, I think, I think basically, uh, you know, it, it's kind of related to this other question of what would the best approach be to fine tune the dialogue, dialogue, dialogue GPT model um, to another domain uh, like psychology. Well, I think the first thing you want to do is you want to basically figure out how to curate the right data for that fine tuning. Like you have to know, again, speaking of psychology, you have to know sort of the psychology of your user, of your customer, of the people that you want to leverage this sort of bot. So that's why when we talked earlier about kind of like Microsoft Azure said, we have this bot service, but then we have this power virtual agent service. And the difference between the two is bot is for customer service and virtual agent is for beyond HR for sales. And fundamentally what you need is you need dialogues between people. You need dialogue data um, to, to really help you with chatbot stuff. And so if, if you can find that dialogue data in your domain, fantastic. If you can't, then it's the kind of thing that you want to start figuring out how you can go and try to either collect, try to buy some data, try to curate that data, try to get you know, people to create that data for you, like the Amazon Mechanical Turk uh, sort of methodology. And you know, really, um, this, is, this is the challenge, is how do you create something specific from sort of a generic, you know, previously we thought object detector, but this is now sort of like a generic kind of, you know, sentiment analyzer, document, uh, you know, reader or, or uh, you know, chatbot uh, now today is a lot of these things that we're thinking about. So look very carefully at where your dialogue data comes from and think about which dialogue data would be best. And then if you don't have it, start collecting it today, especially if you work in a business that has lots of users and you can set up um, something that might give you the data you want uh, to get in the future. So, okay, so maybe, um, yeah, so maybe uh, using a pre-built model comes with bias. Um, yeah, so is there a de-biasing phase? Well, so I, I think, uh, you know, I, I think bias is an important thing to consider, uh, you know, in, in all cases. And the fact that you're even targeting a particular domain is a bias towards that domain. You know, I, I like to think about this idea of, of, of bias is you either have sort of like, you know, you're going to have one or you're going to have many or you're going to have something in between, right? Um, when you go to the, the supermarket, right, you've got, you can have like one choice for ketchup or you can have like a hundred choices for ketchup. It's like, how many choices for ketchup do you want? Um, that's kind of, you know, you want to balance that bias variance trade-off. And so when you're thinking specifically about your problem in your business case and exactly what it is that you're trying to solve, that's where you're going to be able to put that bias lens appropriately on the data that you're using from a pre-trained model perspective or from the data that you're using from a from the ground up model perspective. And then when you combine those two, then it starts to get even potentially more complicated. So this is a, this is a big problem that there's a big opportunity space for lots of you to help out companies do this type of work in the future. So um, yeah, thank you all so very much for your uh, great questions. I'm going to go ahead and uh, stop screen sharing now. And I think I'm going to go ahead and invite Alice back up on the stage to, uh, to close it out for us. Hey, Greg, thank you so much. Can I just say that was fantastic. That was such a great presentation. Thank and you, Alice. great meeting you, Paige, Jay, and Brent. <laughs> love the personas. Love the user story. <sighs> thank you so much. And uh, thank you, everyone, who joined us today. I know we only had an hour, and sorry that we're not able to dive into too much details here, but feel free to just check out all the playlists in the description box. And again, highly recommend you check out the online programs on ThoughtBrain. And um, again, if you missed any part of today's workshop, uh, we will be sending out a follow-up email, including a copy of today's slides and a recording. Um, and again, uh, if you're interested in signing up for the scholarship program, the deadline is coming up uh, November 30th next week. 
So again, thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, Greg. We look forward to seeing you again very soon. And as always, keep learning. Bye.